they they probably have a plan B. And we've seen the outlines of this for weeks and in many respects, months. I mean, frankly, you go back to the reason why Donald Trump was impeached to see what one of their plan B's was. I mean, I don't know what the um, the actual lettering would have been. Maybe it was their plan A. It was their plan 1A or A1B. And that was, of course, to get uh, to create a scandal around uh, Hunter Biden and uh, Burisma that fell apart. Largely because of the impeachment. The next the next big push from the Trump administration has been in the Trump campaign, and I don't know that there's really any uh, difference, has been uh, this argument that mail-in ballots are illegitimate. Last night at the debate, Mike Pence was asked about peaceful transition of power. This is a gimme, folks. This is one where you just simply say, of course. And I mean, supposedly when Donald Trump uh, said, I'm not so sure about it, it was sort of like a half in jest. But here's Mike Pence avoiding the question. President Trump has several times refused to commit himself to a peaceful transfer of power after the election. If Vice President Biden is declared the winner and President Trump refuses to accept a peaceful transfer of power, what would be your role and responsibility as vice president? What would you personally do? You have two minutes. Well, Susan, first and foremost, I think we're going to win this election. Because while uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris rattle off a long litany of the establishment in Washington, D.C., an establishment that Joe Biden's been a part of for 47 years, President Donald Trump is has launched a movement of everyday Americans from every walk of life. And uh, I have every confidence that those, those same Americans that delivered that historic victory in 2016, they see this president's record where we rebuild our military. We revived our economy through tax cuts and rolling back regulation, fighting for fair trade, unleashing American energy. We appointed conservatives to our federal courts at every level. And, and we stood with the men and women of law enforcement every single day. And I think, I think that movement of Americans has only grown stronger in the last four years. But when you talk about accepting the outcome of the election, um, I, I must tell you, uh, Senator, your party has spent the last three and a half years trying to overturn the results of the last election. It's amazing. When Joe Biden was vice president of the United States, the FBI actually spied on President Trump and my campaign. I mean, there were documents released this week that the CIA actually made a referral uh, to the FBI documenting that those allegations were coming from the Hillary Clinton campaign. And, of course, we've all seen the avalanche, the, what, what you put the country through for, for the better part of, of three years until it was found that there was no obstruction, no collusion, case closed. Uh, so he wouldn't answer the question. Um... And I, I suspect part of that is, I mean, look, the, it, it, him saying it one way or another is not going to change uh, their behavior. But I think the idea is that um, they don't want, they want to maintain a lot of confusion about this election. And one of the ways that they're going to do it is by sort of already, you know, sort of delegitimizing the entire process. And so they are arguing the implicit argument that Mike Pence makes when he refuses to say that we will leave peacefully if Joe Biden is declared the winner, is that that declaration of Joe Biden being declared the winner is illegitimate on arrival. That's the, that is the implicit argument that they're making. And there's a whole host of things that are happening. It feels like almost every day that they're small things that are aimed towards creating a, a certain amount of, or I should say uncertainty around the entire electoral process. Um, one of the things that people should be aware of is that starting in 1982, the Republican Party 
had a consent decree that they signed with the Department of Justice barring the Republican Party as a national entity from any type of poll watching. The, uh, the consent decree came as a function of, of what took place in New Jersey in 1981. There was an off-year election for uh, state and municipal uh, offices. And there were groups of men, some of whom were elected, uh, uh, or at least one was an elected official. Others were uh, apparently off-duty police officers uh, who called themselves the National Ballot Security Task Force. And they were, they had armbands saying this. <laughs> um, they were supposedly on the lookout for people casting fraudulent ballots. So all of this talk you've heard in this election about fraudulent voting from the Republicans, all the talk you heard in 2016 from the Republicans regarding fraudulent uh, elections, all the talk we heard from the Bush administration, People forget that there were U.S. attorneys who were fired across the country because they would not, in the lead up to the 2004 election, they would not find voter fraud that could be prosecuted as a way of intimidating people from getting to the, the ballots. This is a longstanding Republican tactic, so much so that um, in 1982, when these, uh, these, this band of, uh, of, of white marauders, essentially, um, some of them apparently armed, showed up at the polls. They were asking for people's voter registration cards. They were telling them that uh, they needed them or their ballot would be illegal. Uh, Democratic leaders at the time went to uh, in front of a judge. And... Apparently, the race was very, very close in New Jersey, or one of the races. I think it was the governor's race at the time. And um, what ultimately happened was in a court case uh, that took place, I believe, in New Jersey, but it was a federal court, I believe. Um, there was... 80 people willing to testify to experiencing or witnessing intimidation. And this was brought against uh, a, a, a uh, this was a lawsuit brought against the Republican National Committee. The, the argument was that this tax force uh, targeted black and Latino vo of, uh, voters and therefore was a violation of the Voting Rights Act. The case was settled between the Republican National Committee and the Department of Justice. And they signed a consent decree, which basically says, we don't uh, admit any guilt, but we agree not to participate in this type of activity for X amount of years. Donald Trump had to sign one at one point uh, for uh, keeping black people out of his um, apartment buildings back in the uh, 70s. In fact, I think he had to sign two. But that consent decree sunsetted in December of 2017. There was a court case in January of 2018 where Democrats attempted to extend the consent decree. They failed because there was no evidence that the Republican National Committee had engaged in any other type of voter suppression since then. In other words, they hadn't violated the consent decree and it, and it sunsetted. And so this is the first nationwide election where the Republican Party is allowed to deploy poll watchers to the polls across the country. Now, I don't imagine that they're going to do it across the country, but it's very likely that they're going to do it in various localities like states like Pennsylvania, let's say, or Wisconsin or Michigan. And 
just yesterday, or apparently, or uh, an email that was sent, I, I guess, by Friday of last week, uh, Pro, uh, Publica reports that the DOJ has changed its policy on voting-related crimes. According to ProPublica, there, the DOJ policy, which says that in the event that there are any voting-related crimes, you, as a Department of Justice prosecutor, cannot make any public uh, announcement about the ongoing investigations that are close to an election. And you also cannot take any public steps like an arrest or a raid before a vote is finalized in the weeks before an election because the publicity could impact the outcome of the race. This is one of the reasons why people were so upset about the Comey letter in 2016. It was a complete violation of, of DOJ policy. But according to ProPublica and according to an email sent on Friday by an official in the public integrity section in Washington, if a U.S. attorney's office now suspects election fraud that involves postal workers or military employees, this is, recall the supposed scandal from a couple of weeks ago where Bill Barr was involved in the finding of eight ballots in an office in Pennsylvania. Federal investigators will be allowed to take public investigative steps before the polls close, even if those actions risk affecting the outcome of the election. And no one's quite sure what to make of this, but the loosening of this uh, policy that has been in place for 40 years has got people a little bit concerned. The uh, new policy carve-out, this is according to uh, Vanita Gupta. He was the former head of the DOJ Civil Rights Division under President Obama. Uh, it may be creating a predicate for the Justice Department to make inflated announcements about mail-in vote fraud and the like in the run-up to the election. Now, it's possible it's not, and it's possible it's just a justification for what they did <laughs> regarding those um, ballots in Pennsylvania. But we have Donald Trump calling for uh, poll watchers who presumably are going to find some problems, who presumably are then going to go to the U.S. attorney in specific states, who then can make public pronouncements uh, in the run up to the polls. And um, this is happening concurrently with courts around the, the country in some instances of the Supreme Court, making it harder for people to vote. I mean, there's a there's just a multi-pronged effort to disenfranchise people or to create obstacles to people voting in this election. And that seems to be increasingly, you know, with Donald Trump uh, refusing to go into a debate when he's clearly behind in the polls. Um Increasingly, that seems to be they're moving up into their sort of like first order strategy. And um, if you find that disturbing, you should. It's disturbing. Um, all right, let's take a, a quick uh, 